The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Global Market Pulse with your host, John Logan. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, John Logan. Hi guys, welcome back to the show. Hope you guys are doing well. You know, looking at the uh, indices profile heat grid and the scanner, um, you know, some interesting situations going on here, even on our intermediate daily. We talked about this yesterday, just things starting to creep over on our 60 minute and four hour. Let's take a look at that also. Yeah, let's get this up here. So here's our four hour. I mean, the globe has kind of rolled over as far as aggregate profile statistics here. Here's the one hour. The four hour is pretty powerful. Um, when I look at some some broad changes going on in the global scene, but the daily really is is really tells a story here. Let's take a look at this. The only thing still showing net profile breadth statistics above zero are the Nasdaq, the Nifty Fifty, and the Bovespa, and they're just kind of hanging here. Nasdaq probably going to be folding over today. This is kind of wild. Let's go back to the S and P's here. Um, talked about this yesterday talked about you know things starting to look heavy and uh, then things crossed over kind of early morning here we talked about getting to that 2152 area there's that 2152 there on the daily and we talked about if these were kind of crossed up here it wasn't the time to be buying that as support like we had kind of been looking at it before so let's take a look at this uh, here's the, you know, today is Wednesday. God, I get to talk to Tom today on his show. So here's the, here's the weekly situation. New supply attempting to appear. This is kind of interesting. Came down, kind of re, you know, pierced it, retested on the close yesterday around 2152. That's pretty powerful. That's some breath calculations are rolling over we've actually kind of broken down on the daily for the first time in forever as you can see these profile if you look at what's happened before let's let's go back for instance to july 5th reached that high explored the low these are almost to the tick here 2065 2064 2104 2105 these are these are pretty powerful levels here. So when you, when we break these things and then we go back and retest them, these are these are pretty good harbingers of, of uh, bearish news here. So all things considered, I think you've got to be still looking at this. Even though the Dow, they're they're kind of, you know, here here's the Dow. Let me just pull this. I rarely look at this. It's a cool instrument to trade, but, you know, they're going, okay, well, the Dow's been down for seven days in a row. Um, big deal. I mean, I think these down days have been all of probably an average of 20 points. Nothing to write home about. Um, but the s and is kind of making this move here. And we're going to reference the NASDAQ really quick. I'm sorry to bounce around here. We're just trying to get all things kind of looked at here when it comes to uh, looking at these indices. The NASDAQ really... You know, it, it's in the middle of a fair auction here. This is our daily. The unfair lows are 46.41. The unfair highs are 47.47. So, you know, what do you do with this now as, uh, as far as the NASDAQ goes? Again, this is kind of no man's land on the NASDAQ. But the S&Ps, I think you've got some, some leverage here by looking around the globe and understanding that we've pierced this. 2152 area and we've already retested this morning and we could just kind of drift lower so i'm looking at this as stops above 2152 get, giving it a little bit more of a generous stop than normal um and trying to allow for this to kind of just sail away here on the downside a little bit i don't know if we're going to have any major pullbacks today but again i think you've got something to lean on here 
all things considered that we just spoke of when it comes to looking at the components within the scanner. When we look at this, you know, here's the S&Ps, we're at 10% rollover here. Still a pretty good middle ground area, but um, I like how this is acting as far as, you know, having a little bit of a pullback here. A lot of the stocks that we talked about yesterday and some of the ETFs that we drilled into, some of the strong stocks and weak stocks, we're going to revisit a little bit later and see how some of those healthcare stocks that were weak that we talked about, if we did have a kind of a pullback in the S&Ps and the XLV did finally pull back, again, you had better shorts out there than looking at healthcare stocks. But some of those stocks really came in as the market came in just a tad. And I'm going to show you the XLV here. Um, XLV pulled back again a strong sector pulled back to that 74.94 and just bounced right off of there but you know even with a, a smidget of a pullback off of some serious highs here in the, in the healthcare sector we had talked about some stocks and again I'm not trying to say hey wow look at what we did it, it's just I'm, I'm giving this talk today as an ex to show you some examples drilling into the healthcare sector of some things that worked out. And, and one thing that really didn't work out, um, we'll revisit that too. But uh, a lot of these that, you know, that we kind of put on the board yesterday that were showing some weakness, universal healthcare services, this is one we talked about. Again, close below, profile appearing above price action this week. And then, you know, the healthcare sector pulls back a little bit. You know, market gave some help, obviously, and and these stocks again are the low risk trade, and that's what we're always looking for. And there's, you know, there's there's not a there's not a a little girl with a sign up saying, "Hey, wow, it's safe to get in the water. Please come over and short these things." I mean, it 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 there's always risk in it, but you know what we try to do is mitigate the risk. I mean, that's really the bottom line when you're, in my opinion, when you're trading. And if you use this methodology, it may be boring at times, but uh, again, boring can be good as we talked about yesterday. Let's take a look at uh, a couple of other ones here. Um, PRGO, this is one we looked at. This is just, man, this this one, this they, they're at some point going to pull the plug on something like that. Gilead Sciences, you know, we talked about this one. Uh, closed below weekly, weak stock in the XLV. Came off a little bit yesterday, which was nice. Again, kind of proving that theory. Uh, a couple other ones that we talked about. We're going to look at Biogen. There's some serious news out with that one. Um, Cigna. Again, you know, stocks that had kind of showed their self early. Scanner just kind of put them on the board for you. And a lot of times I'll throw some of these into a custom portfolio. HCA. These are stocks that had already kind of been showing cracks in the armor on the weekly and uh, we had looked at breakdowns which uh, some of these uh, XLV stocks believe it or not were in that sector so we're going to look at these again when we come back folks is excited to offer a brand new piece of market scanning software unlike anything the industry has ever seen. John Logan and his team have spent years developing their market profile tools to finally be able to release the Taz Profile Scanner Plus. And right now you can get a two week trial absolutely free just by visiting TFNN.com and providing us your name and email address. The Taz Profile Scanner Plus is the premier market profile based scanner in the industry. Powered by the acclaimed Taz proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner is a standalone desktop software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Within three minutes of signing up, you can have the software downloaded and running on your computer with a complete roadmap of market indicators and inflection points to trade off using the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. Sign up today and try this amazing piece of software by visiting TFNN.com. 
Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming. See high definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. John takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 1044. Hi, guys. Uh, taking a look at a couple other healthcare stocks, uh, news driven. The sub. Uh, Biogen situation. Um, you know, guys who are looking at this and saying, wow, wow, what a move. Uh, I need to look at this. Let me uh, try to take advantage of something. Um, you know, here, here's a healthcare stock that two weeks ago closed above, kind of hovered above, and then I, you can't really predict this type of thing's going to happen, takeover situations and buyouts and et cetera. Uh, but, uh, you know, what do you do with this now? Um, down a little bit this morning, it looks like this is a real print 325. And what you really have to do now is really wait. Um, you know, is this, see, these 240s are going to appear. You're just going to have to wait for these to happen in the scanner. And I don't, I don't know what else to say. I, I can't go long or short this stock right now. Um, there's nothing to play defense against. So let's take a look at Merck. Uh, let's see here. Looks like a print 58.33 down here. So, um, is that a real print? I think it is. Yeah, looks like it. So, uh, again, you know, you're looking at uh, trading this stock, somewhat news-driven. Uh, you've got something to lean on here at 5806. But, again, I think you got better things to play around with. There's not a lot of leverage here. I don't see a massive amount of odds lining up to trade that. AGN, another one involved in this. Um See if we got a real print today. Uh, it looks like 252. So, AGN again, like Merck, uh, you, you got some support here from 2047 into 2050. We're kind of hovering above that this morning. So, you do have still some support here on AGN. A little bit better situation technically than Merck. Let's take a look at a couple of the usual suspects here. We got to go to oil. Um, Again, you know, the, the biggest indicator that that uh, that we have used is Goldman, <laughs> Goldman Sachs says it's time to get long way up there. And uh, they missed this ride. And, uh, you know, obviously they're wrong as heck here. So they've had some other things come out lately. we got to fade some. I'm going to mention those a little bit later. But, um, you know, again, you know, throwing that out the window, th this is the weekly kind of break the spine here. 
that happened on the profiles um, hovered around there. Didn't exactly want to get away from that profile on Fairlaw on the weekly, and hence is running everybody out of the trade. So we talked about, you know, how do you play this? You got to wait until you have a profile here to play defense against. And here's the 240s. You know, talked about got to trade this thing. If you must trade this thing on the short term, we talked about 4173. We talked about turning the wrench the same way. We talked about, hey, we broke down. We got. These are the only things we have to play around with here. And we go back and retest. We use these areas as battle points. And, uh, again, proving the theory, things on their lows can go lower, especially in the commodities world. Here's uh, gold. Um, talked specifically yesterday uh, just in theory about, you know, what's the long-term trend, target-rich environment up here around, third, uh, what is this, 1359.60. Um, talked about just kind of waiting and not really trading that from the short side. Still looks really good on the long side. 1377 could be the next stop up. Again, those are kind of racing for the recent highs. I don't see how this wouldn't happen, actually. Um, again, not, you know, the, getting short gold right now is probably the wrong thing to do, even though we kind of are hovering around that weak limb for high, especially. And another thing here, when you when you get into these major long-term inflection points, you want to see them get away from them, and this thing's just like, hey, I'm here to stay, kind of feeling, and just kind of waiting for the next uh, news that could drive it higher. The ten-year, again, uh, you know, not not wanting to be short these things ever, uh, just waiting for the you know the, the basing action here, the targets up here, not wanting to be short. Again, waiting for a breakout. I actually tried to trade that 132.28 from as we closed above and uh, had the retest. But again, that's what stops are for. We're just kind of sitting tight here. We're just trading within a profile on the on the daily and the weekly. No harm done. Dollar, uh, not really a trade right now. Just kind of avoiding that until we get some better probabilities line up there. Uh, hitting a couple other things. I want to look at, um, of course, copper. Here we go. Some, you know, some fundamentally bad news out for uh, for copper prices. And uh, here's where we're at on the weekly. Let me just pull this up on September copper. Um, still hovering above this 2.1677. Uh, I think this is a no trade right now. We're going to hit some other ones that we usually follow, beans, get a little bit of action this morning. But again, you know, here's the uh, the long term is below profiles, the daily is below profiles. You've got to be looking at 973.5 as a selling point on this, or if you're trying to trade a bounce right now, that would be kind of your targets, in my opinion. A couple of earnings we're going to hit real quick. Uh, AIG, God, do you remember when this thing was going to hell in a handbasket? In 2008, 2009. Uh, let's see. Out this morning, 56.38 is printing. After the close, actually ramped up, as you guys know, this morning a little bit higher. So 56.38. Again, not rolling the dice before anything. It's just kind of waiting. You're up in here on our weekly. Um, Kind of a no trade in my book. CVS. Let's take a look at some uh, information on this one. Looks like we're printing about 98 right now. So, again, we've come up into these weekly unfair highs on CVS. Not an outperformer here. Um, I'd be looking at this as a short opportunity. I'm not exactly excited to be long the market this minute. So uh, we could have a little bit of a pullback off CVS off of those numbers on the weekly unfair highs. Let's take a look at Pfizer PFE. Down a little bit here. Um, looks like we're printing 36.12 this morning. So. Here's a long-term on Pfizer. Hasn't been the weakest stock. Here's the daily. Uh, decent news out. Let me let me well, let me see where we're printing. Sorry, guys. Thirty-six twelve. 
So just coming down into the bottom of a daily profile, I think this is all things considered not bad news. Pulled back anyway. A little bit of profit taken. You've got support at 3588. I, I look at this as buying support here. If you're going, if you want to be looking at buying strong stocks in a market that may head south, but again, anything can happen. If the market heads south, it may not drag this thing down because relative strength is in play here. And if the market does head north, you may have a little bit of a chance on this one on the long side. Procter & Gamble, the anti-stock here. Here we go. God, I used to hate this specialist. We're going to take a look at this when we get back, folks. trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to tom o'brien's daily market letter market insights tom o'brien's daily newsletter market insights comes out every market day at around 9 30 a.m and provides tom's daily commentary on the broad market including the dow nasdaq and s p plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC-insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. EverBank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, call 1-855-750-4051 to find out what they can do for you. That's 1-855-750-4051. Call them today. EverBank is a member FDIC and Equal Housing Lender. Until recently, it was almost impossible for the average investor to hedge against currency risk in Europe or Japan. For a bold trade on Europe or Japan that protects against moves in currency, trade HEGE or HEGJ, two times currency hedged leveraged ETFs from Direction Investments. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, guys. Welcome back to the show. Here's Procter & Gamble. Um... Here's, again, where we closed yesterday, 86.30. Productivity savings is in play here is what they're saying, but um, let's see. We've got a print this morning. Nothing yet. Um, up a little bit yesterday. Here's the daily, the weekly. You know what the drill is there. Um, definitely a strong stock in a market that's kind of been going sideways to, to down a little bit lately. But, again, you know, what do you do with this thing? I like this thing buying support around the 8630 
really, literally. If the market comes off a little bit, this thing's kind of the anti-stock, so always remember that. Uh, soda. All right, so obviously decent news here. Here's the weekly on SODA. Is it time to step in and start shorting this? Uh, no. This is not the one that you've got a lot of things to lean on here, so I had, a, had an email about that one. All right, so let's let's uh, hit a couple other things here that we usually hit. Let's take a look at the yen. And the situation on the yen, here's the talked about, you know, trying to pick about around 105.23, I believe, after we had hit the 107.71.72, almost to the tick there. So we're coming down into that 124.25, 101.33 area. That's kind of the collection area, but, man, it's really disturbing that we've explored the entire fair auction here. I didn't think that was even going to happen with this. But, uh, you know, you can put some stops below 100 um, and try to think that, I mean, God, I don't know if you guys know this, one in seven houses in Japan are actually vacant. I mean, it's, that place has got a, just a horde of, of troubles. And uh, government intervention, I, I, even without it, I would have thought this currency would have bounced a little bit here. But um Again, that's this is kind of Custer's last stance for a while. It may pierce this area just to do it, just to kind of run some people out of this trade. So, uh, again, keep that in mind. Australian dollar looking good still to me. 77 and some change still targets up top on that one. British pound, we've talked about this one getting long here. Why? This has been a neat little trade. You had some really cool things to lean on here on the weekly, 130.19, to try to leverage this up even higher. And, and the reason being is because we, you know, we really looked good here on the daily. Um, you know, we talked about some initial targets around 133 and some change. We're kind of there. But, uh, again, I think we could go a little bit higher here. Here's the 240s, giving you a little bit of good news here. Profiles appearing below price action. That's always nice and bullish. Euro, still hoping this thing falls apart. Got the hedge on for the long-term trade. Not really trying to pay attention to that. All right, we're going to hit a couple of ETFs here. Um, the financial sector, kind of acting as expected. You know, market coming off a little bit here. The financial sector coming off. Uh, 2309 is going to be your targets on this one down below. And I, I hope even lower. XLU, I like how this little thing's acting here, still stabilizing, staying above unfair lows here on the profiles. Don't think there's a lot of danger on the 10-year right now. They're not going to do anything, in my opinion. They're just going to yap both ways as far as the rhetoric. Staples, uh, I, I, like the, I like this action on this one. I like how we're, you know, Broke stride a little bit here, came back and retested yesterday and the day before, kind of not wanting to uh, to pierce anything there. And I like how this is acting, and I like how it's a short with stops above 54.84 on the staples. XLE, uh, again, broke stride here on the weekly and the daily. Holding up extremely well, though in the face of oil coming off like this. So, uh, again, getting back above 66, 66 and a half. I think you've got a decent relative strength trade, especially with some of the internals of the XLE. Let's go into that really quick. And there's the XLE and the seller down there on our scanner profile heat grid. Halliburton, something we were looking at, uh, why? Just pulling back into that. Kind of pierced it yesterday. Kind of now have to wait and see on this. Just want to point that out. Something that went a little lower than I thought it was going to go. Uh, a couple other things that um, we generally have looked at. Southwestern Energy. A um, little bit of a pullback here, but nothing, nothing scary. I still like this stock as a long. A couple other ones we have been looking at. Uh, CNX. Still looking nice and healthy there. 
Marathon. Again, really, really attractive little situation in Marathon there. And that's Marathon Petroleum. Marathon Oil, a different story. But coming down into support here, 1294. Uh, even though we're showing on Marathon Oil, you know, some reds across the board there, we're at a major inflection point coming down from above. And let me pull up something here. Sorry, I'm staying in the XLE sector. Here we go. All right. So, uh, that's not what I wanted to pull up. Sorry, guys. Let me clear the air here. Get back to normal. We're going to take a look at Amazon really quick. VLO, yes, I will look at that. Um, this is one we talked about just really not shorting. Um, again, you, you look at this, you look at the weekly, you look at the daily. Spinning around up here above 757, you, you got to be looking at this as, again, this thing, you know, the market gives it any help going north. This thing's going to go north. Here's the, here's the weekly. Again, we spin around here above 731 and a half. You get really good places to play defense on this. And again, just kind of rotely pressing the buy button when we're at breakouts or support on Amazon is, you know, not to overthink this particular trade. Let's take a look at Apple. And then we're going to hit VLO in just a second here. Um, nothing, in my opinion, to really trade Apple against on the long-term intermediate. Here's the 240s. Uh, I think I, I think you just got to leave this alone right now. VLO. Um, here's the long term on VLO. Uh, we've reached some targets up top. We talked about hoping this thing would get in the 53.77 last week. I I think. Um, so now we're in the middle of a fair auction on the weekly, and uh, we're coming up into some resistance again. But all things considered. Um, I think you've got better shorts out there right now than BLO. Guys, we'll be right back. the current market volatility continue to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software 
software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, 6 videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Hi, guys. Welcome back to the show. Uh, Going to take a look at uh, December wheat really quick. Or excuse me, December corn, sorry. Um, uh, again, kind of like uh, beans here, we've just kind of gravitated below profiles here. Um, only way to be long this thing for any bounces right now is to get back above 336, probably close above there. But again, I, I just, you know, there's, man, a lot of, lot of corn out there. Here's uh, September wheat. Um, kind of similar situation. I, I don't know if I, I just think you got better things to put capital and mental capital towards. I guess you guys heard about the Bitcoin thing. I, I still don't completely understand that. All right. Uh, a couple of other things here. Um, Aetna, you know, I was shocked. They're, they're saying that, you know, somehow they lost money in paraphrasing here, uh, dealing with the Obamacare situation. Here's Aetna, healthcare stock, just kind of petering around below 116.66. I think this thing could actually take another dive down. Getting below 114 is going to really possibly put some, some extra oomph on the short side on this. But I was shocked, you know, dealing with, Obamacare, just like all of you probably have. Um, I had some things that I was personally trying to reorganize as far as filing taxes. And, um, you know, so that, you know, obviously they asked for tax returns and stuff like that. And they said, oh, you got other alternatives and you can do a personal ledger <laughs> on your income and just send it to us and that'll suffice. And I mean, it's like, Really? That is wild. No bank statements, no nothing. Just throw it in there. But the thing is, I guess what I'm ultimately getting at is, you know, these healthcare providers on the network and insurance companies, you know, they just, I don't know how, I don't, I have no idea how Aetna claims they're, they're losing money on this deal because all they, they have a right just to, they, they've just raised everything tremendously because they know the government's going to back it. I don't, I, don't, I don't totally understand that. It's wild. Let's take a look at Johnson & Johnson. Uh, again, kind of like the, the Procter & Gamble kind of situation, something probably to not be shorted. There's really nothing to hang on to up here in Johnson & Johnson. <laughs> they only like healthy people. So what are you trying to say, Jay? Um, here we go. Let's take a look at the scanner again, folks. Uh, going into the dashboard, um, again, you know, looking at, we started seeing, again, this was another indication that we were just saying, hey, okay, things are getting a little more populated on the breakdown side. Well, after yesterday, this thing doubled. So uh, some stocks are definitely starting to roll over here. 
And we, you know, I haven't been talking about this market relaxing a little bit on the downside until recently, if you've been watching this show. And when we look at the S&Ps, um, you know, I've, I've actually been saying, look, you know, this thing's kind of spinning around up here. But when the internals on the breath calculations start changing, and then some of these custom sorts here, breakdowns is not a, doesn't take an Einstein to, to figure out our formula on breakdowns, but um, some of these, you know, stocks in, the, in a downtrend, breakdowns, this is becoming more populated here. And these things don't just do this and then just reverse immediately. I mean, this is kind of a little, little bit of an indicator here also. Stocks are in a strong downtrend. This is probably quadrupled lately. Uh, Walt Disney just, you know, kind of throwing some things out there. This is, again, these relative strength plays. Last week we had a close blow on the weeklies. Then we just, you know, market pulls back a little bit, and these stocks just kind of come apart. So, uh, again, you know, something to – Remember, stocks that are not doing well when the market does pull back, uh, you know, Anthem, another one that's in the healthcare sector. Uh, a couple of others that, that we have been looking at. Here's Southwest. Now, this is one we talked about, in fact, yesterday. And, you know, we talked about, you know, doing a flush and really racing past these recent lows on LUV. If you see that, and then you look at the weeklies, you know, it's just a different time frame. This is, these are case in points for what I was talking about specifically yesterday. LUV just giving you a nice little bang for your buck there. Uh, McDonald's. I like this one a lot. I mean, we just, you know, earnings related situation closed below last week on the profiles, just keeping a lid on it right now below 118.86. If you guys see that. Oh, God. Here we go. Uh, a couple other things Delta Airlines. Let's take a look at this one. Um, these are stocks, again, relative weak type situations. Yesterday, just, just bit the dust. Is that a good, good way to coin this one? Stocks that are sitting on the precipice of just falling the crap that have already been, you know, rally back up into recent battle points areas and then just market gives it a little bit of help and you see what happens. Again, um, Planning for the future, trying to find things that are showing anomalies relative to the market strength lately. A couple of other ones, I mean, T, T. Rowe Price. Again, not the most exciting things in the world, but definitely giving you heads up here. Uh, going into downtrend, um, instead of ultimate, here you go, let's see, let's take a look at Goldman Sachs. So, again, you know, Goldman Sachs, we talked about a couple of weeks ago in the X. LF coming up into areas. Here's one 152.25.26. Talked about that as a selling point, but then also talked about next stop up was a chance to pick the battle again. 163.35. Pretty much hit that to the tick, and then we've kind of started coming off. So, again, a great yeah, reason to, to look at uh, stops. And then being able to kind of turn the rents the same way again. Let's go back to Goldman Sachs on uh, on the we on the uh, on the e signal here. Here's where we're at. A little bit nicer charts. Let's take a look at Bank of America here, really quick. All right. Uh, Nice little situation here, 1423, I think is the selling point here. I, I, I'm not confident at all that the XLF is going to do well anytime soon. So you've got some stocks showing some breakdowns here, but um, let's take a look at J.P. Morgan staying in that sector. Uh, this is one definitely not as attractive as Bank of America. Citigroup. like this one stops above 4387 we'll be right back
Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of The Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com. Catch Larry Pesavento, a 40-year veteran trader. He uses pattern recognition, Gartley's, Butterflies, ABC's, and Fibonacci in order to trade these markets. Trade what you see next on TFNN. Hi, guys. Uh, welcome back to the show. Here we go. So uh, I want to show you. I went to uptrend reversals. I'm sorry. Where was that here? Downtrend reversals. As you notice, Cardinal Health, we talked about this yesterday. Just want to tell you that sometimes things don't exactly work out like we talk about them, but you get into a better area, 85.59. Obviously, they had uh, you know, a, a spike above this area, 83.42 yesterday. I think Tom and I were talking about it. And uh, one of the ones... One of the only ones we actually talked about yesterday that didn't want to cooperate coming off that inflection point, but you but you are up into a better number up here. Um, remembering the XLV is pretty strong. Let's take a look at uh, uptrend reversals. These are stocks that you know have been at somewhat of a defined uptrend, either being above profiles on the daily or or kind of plowing up. But within a balanced area, excuse me, on the weekly, but within a balanced area, still in the weekly, but starting to break on a daily from that trend. I'm just going to pick a couple here. Uh, Gap. This is an interesting one um, and gives you a really clear picture here. If you'll notice, uh, trading below 2465, just completely barreled all the way through this profile here. And um, I like this thing to relax. And one of the things also with Gap, you know, you you you, you kind of had some uh, red shoots ahead of time on the on the 240s and 60s here. Uh, a couple of these other ones, Michael Kors, 
again, a, a very nice, cool situation here to be shorting this thing with some defense above 50.95 on cores. Similar situation to Gap, Macy's. A lot of these XLY, um, and here, wow, fell off the cliff there. And uh, targets down below don't have much of a target left. 31.15 on Macy's. Chipotle. <laughs> yeah, the, not the long, long of the world there. Uh, BB and T. This is a financial stock. Uh, I think the financials have some more downside here, but again, BB and T breaking down yesterday can orient some stops around thirty six fifty three. A couple of other ones: General Motors. Nice little breakdown there. Coming back into the weekly profiles. Verizon, uh, that happened yesterday or the day before, and then we continued to head south after the breakdown. Here's the weekly targets initially 52.21 on Verizon. There's that Bank of America situation that we talked about earlier. American Airlines, you know, the Deltas, the LUVs. The American Airlines, probably UAL, too. That's probably in this list, breaking down on the dailies. There's UAL. Similar situation. If you guys can see those, just pulling up the chart, identifying itself as uptrend reversals. Salesforce. And this one, I mean, this one really, I wouldn't be looking at this to put a lot of heavy weight on the short side. Coca-Cola Enterprises, CCE. I like how this one has acted, gotten really away from these weekly and unfair highs, breaking down on the dailies finally. You've got a chance to play defense above 37, 36. These are a little bit more scarier trades on the short side. Um, been in an uptrend, just starting to reverse, getting a little bit more populated in this sort. Guys, you've been great. Stay tuned for Larry. He's next. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This is TFNN.